Before we move on to programming our sensors, uh, I'd like to take some time to organize our code a little bit. And we're going to do that by navigating to the place where our code is stored. And before we open the program, we're going to create a new file. This new file is going to be nano mouse motors dot h and if you get a warning just hit OK this file is a header file now when I double click the actual program and the Arduino IDE fires up you're going to see two tabs one is going to be the nano mouse motors file we just created and you'll see that it's blank what we're going to do is move all code related to making the mouse move from the nano mouse, the, the main file into the motors file. The first step is to move this servo line. Now I'm just going to copy this one because it has to remain inside the main file just because of the weird way in which the Arduino IDE compiles these programs. Whenever I do this, whenever I create a new fold, a new a header file, I need to also include the Arduino.h file. Next, it's just a matter of cutting and pasting the lines related to motors from this file into that file. So I'm going to cut these four lines of code. and paste them over here. You may wonder why I cut these two lines of code and the reason is because these two lines of code that define left and right are used mainly by the motors class. Eventually they're going to be used by the main file, the nano mouse class, but because this file is going to include this file, this information, this, these definitions will uh, trickle into that file and they can be used by it. I also need to cut this line of code and put it in here and last but not least I need to cut all of the functions related to making the mouse move so now if we look back we should see a very simple program that has very little going on. Um, it almost has nothing to do with motors. You'll see we're going to take care of these two lines of code shortly. Everything else is now over in this file. I could probably, I can make this work, but I don't like the way that it would work. And that's because it doesn't, uh, it wouldn't encapsulate everything, the creation of an object and uh, the, how things are defined and how things are related in one file. I would actually have to define, uh, I would have to declare variables over here and I'd have to attach them here. And I want to have just one motor object that's declared and one no motor object that's motors object that's defined or attached. So I'm going to create a class to do that. I'm going to call it class nano mouse motors. And I have to have an open parenthesis and at the bottom a closing parenthesis followed by a semicolon. That's very important when you create classes. Now if I hit control T, you'll see the white space get cleaned up. Everything that I just copied over gets indented. You'll notice I didn't put these inside the class and that's just because these are defined instead of a uh, instead of being created as uh, variables or constants and if they're defined they can't be in a class. The next step is to uh, let the program know whether these are public or private variables and functions and so I'm going to type private and everything that follows private means that it actually can't be accessed outside of the nano mouse motors class so right now everything can't be used over here. I, I'm declaring these as private, the, the two servo objects and then this um, power constant because I don't want it to be changed. I don't want those to be accessed by the the main file but I'm going to declare everything else as public. It's because I do want to be able to access 
all of the functions that control the movement of this robot. Now, before I go on any further, when you do create a class and you have a constant, you have to put this word static in front of it. The static is, if you're using creating a variable, it allows you to have the variable's value stored even after you call a function uh, a second time or a third time. Whatever the ending value of that variable was, it will remember it even if the function's run its course, it's ended, and then you restart it again. Here, I'm not exactly sure why you need to do it, but you need to do it or it won't compile. So, our, our class now is created and it's ready to be used. I'm going to go ahead and hit the verify button just to make sure we didn't make any mistakes. And you'll see that it's highlighting these two lines of code. So what that's telling us is we actually do need to attach these, but it doesn't really know how because these objects haven't been created in this file. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another function over here, and it's going to be the attach function. And what we'll do is just copy or cut these two lines of code and place them over here. And this attach function is going to have two parameters. It's going to have a left motor. I'm going to make that a byte. And a right motor. And instead of being pin 6, it will be left motor and right motor. OK. So now what I need to do, just like I've created a servo object here, and I attach it down here, I need to do the same thing over here. But I'm going to create a nano mouse motors object. And I'm going to, the, the name of the object is just going to be motors. Down here, I actually have to attach the servos to that motors object. And I'm going to attach the left one to pin 6 and the right one to pin 5. So here you can see that where I would have had to declare both of these variables and then attach both, or declare both of these objects and then attach both of them, I can do that in just two lines of code right here because I've created a class. In order to use this file, I actually have to include it. So I'm going to hit include. And then I have to put this in quotes because it's pulling it from a different location. It's pulling it from the same file instead of the libraries, or the same folder instead of the libraries folder. Okay. And then the last thing I need to do is when I actually call a function that belongs to the nano mouse motors header file and I create an object called motors, I need to type motors before that function followed by a period. So here's the, the object and here's the function. Let's go ahead and verify and make sure it works. Oh, and I forgot a semicolon. Let's try that again. Everything looks good. Go ahead and load and test your program onto your nanomouse robot to make sure everything works just like before.